so let's jump to Arjuna's great question. Okay, Shiva. These are all names of Krishna. I don't think there's somebody else here. But sometimes the names change, but this is a, the entire thing is a dialogue between occasionally the beginning and the end. Uh, it's the blind king, but the entirety of the Gita is a conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. But the names may change. Krishna has many names. Here's one here, Keshava. And sometimes Arjuna will be called, you know, son of Bharata or, or rather descendant of Bharata or Pandu or some other name. But these are just epithets. So Arjuna inquired, okay, Shiva, what are the characteristics of one whose understanding is mature? How do we recognize someone who is a, a wise person, that mind is always contemplating the Atman, who is fixed in concentration in this way, concentrating on the Atman, the goal of life, whose thoughts are focused? Hmm? How does a person speak? How does that person sit and walk? Arjuna wants some practical, how do I recognize such a person? Or how do I recognize myself uh, if I'm you know, making progress on the path of wisdom. So 55, so Bhagavan says, one who has given up all desires. Now notice how many times this message gets repeated, giving up desires. I had a student count this once, and 750 verses in the Bhagavad Gita, 110, mentions something about giving up desire. So when one has given up all desires that originate within the mind, where do the desires come from? They're in the mind, right? The mind sees something, and it looks pleasurable, and it, imprints itself in the mind and that becomes a desire to obtain that or it's a memory something that one was enjoyable in the past re arises in the mind it was pleasant in the past so the mind wants to re-experience it they, uh, they originate in the mind not in the Atman one who has found contentment within is content but the mind is sattvic and takes complete satisfaction from contemplating the Atman that person is said to be a mature understanding one whose mind is free of anxiety during times of trouble. How do you free of anxiety? We understand that trouble, what is trouble? Trouble is just inconvenience of the body and mind. If, we, if the yogi is fixed in understanding the eternal self, then nothing that happens to the body and mind is going to be particularly disruptive. The yogi is going to understand it's just my karma, it comes and goes, and with that, I, but I'm eternal. So therefore is free of anxiety during times of trouble, who is without the desire for happiness, meaning might seek the happiness, the, the bliss of the Atman, but not material happiness. A wise person understands this material happiness, it comes and goes, is simply temporary. Whose passions, fears and angers have departed. That is a sage of steady mind. 57. Who is free for desire. Again, he's going to repeat it. Count for yourselves. How many times does he repeat this? He may change the, he may use synonyms for desire, desire, attachment, longing, greed. They're all the same thing. One who is free of desire, whether good or evil, and who neither rejoices nor hates, normally rejoice when desires are fulfilled, and we hate something that interferes with our desires. So all of this revolves around desires. And if we give those up, we become peaceful according to Gita. So is a person of mature understanding? Remember Arjuna's question is, who is a person of mature understanding or wisdom? Or sthita di in Sanskrit. As a tortoise, tortoise withdraws its limbs on all sides, right? Four little legs and a head, five limbs get sucked in whenever there's a danger. So a person of mature understanding is able to withdraw the senses from the sense objects. Five senses, Yogi can be in the world, doesn't have to run away to the forest to avoid the sense objects. Can be in the sense in the world of sense objects, but like the tortoise, when the senses get distracted by sense objects, yogi keeps keeps them under control, withdraws them within. Another metaphor, we had the metaphor in the Upanishads of the remember the horses with the reins, the five horses. But the intelligence is controlling the mind, which is controlling the horses. The rain the mind is the rain. Intelligence is the driver. Okay, so same metaphor, controlling the senses ultimately, because the senses are, where, are, are, are the aspects of our physiology that try to experience desire. And if the experiences are good, they leave the impression in the mind, and that becomes a desire for re repeat, repeat uh, experience.